Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to look at the syllabus for a short story in context and uh, um, look at, I'll help you navigate CourseWeb and how this course will be set up as well. So um, the general information for the course is here at the top. Um, importantly, my email address. That is the best way to get a hold of me. I check it often. Uh, if you have any questions or concerns, you can email me there. Um, as far as assignments, questions about assignments or similar, try to email me as early as possible. And that could mean doing assignments early before they're due. Um, so um, if you're finishing up an assignment at 11.59 and uh, you have a problem with it and it's due at 12, um, you don't want to send me an email at that point. There's no way I could get back to you in enough time. So try to do your uh, assignments uh, ahead of time and email me with any problems. Let's look at the course description. I'll explain it a little bit. This course will examine the genre of short story, especially its traditional and innovative narrative techniques, its various ways of constructing authorial point of view, its mode of plot, in the relation to literary structure and its range of styles from realism and naturalism to allegory. So many different styles, many different parts of short stories, many different genres and techniques. A primary aim of this course will be focused on gaining a better understanding of our place in the world through the perspective of our relationships with nature, culture, and society. So that's something I believe all literature does and should do. Uh, it can help transport us. It can help us understand the world around us. Um, for instance, I um, often, I teach courses on non-Western cultures. Um, I have not been lucky enough to travel a lot. But through the world of writing and literature and nonfiction and um, and through meeting people from all over the world, um, I'm able to examine and uh, pretty much learn about the world without even ever going there. This course will focus on the different contexts that people negotiate in their everyday lives. Questions that we will consider will include the following. How does literature challenge us to rethink our ideas about our placement in the world? How does our social identity shape the production of literature? And how is identity concealed? What is the significance of race, class, ethnicity, gender, and sexual orientation in writing and literature? Um, and then I forgot to adjust this for the online version of this course, but through our numerous assignments and activities, I hope that you'll develop the critical ability to read and write about literature from a wider lens. You'll also be encouraged to engage in dialogue and uh, work together to build our critical thinking skills and social awareness. So there'll be slight adjustments there for the online version of this course. Um, I will tell you ahead of time, um, it's not going to be as interactive between students as I would normally prefer. Um, this is actually my first time uh, teaching this course online. And uh, I just wasn't able to build a lot of interaction between uh, students for this version of this course. Um, so, but we'll try to do it through our assignments and activities. <coughs> so, course objectives to better understand short story as genre, to explore connections between literature and life, to develop and apply critical thinking skills, to enhance awareness of the operations of culture, world, context, and gender in literature and society. There's not any required texts. Um, I'm a person who um, had difficulties affording texts in my undergraduate studies, so uh, when possible, I don't assign uh, you to buy any. Um, uh, plagiarism statement. Uh, so, unacknowledged borrowing of ideas, facts, phrases, or whole words in a paper from books, websites, or any other source, copying of another student's work, and using the same work in multiple courses, all constitute plagiarism and are unacceptable in the university community. 
Students turning in plagiarized work may receive a failing grade for the essay or the entire course. It is standard policy that any form of plagiarism be reported to the university and recorded. All papers turned in will be submitted to SafeAssign to check for authenticity. We'll discuss this more as we go. So, <coughs> um, basically for this course, uh, you shouldn't need to consult any outside sources. Um, all of the questions and all of our work are self-contained in the readings that I assign and the discussions that I post online. If for some reason you decide you do want to consult outside sources, um, then uh, what I ask is that you put any absolute anything you get from an outside source, put the information in quotes, and somehow clearly provide something that can get me to that source. Um, I'm not teaching citation, so I don't expect perfect citation, but something of which I could locate that source. And keep in mind that if you're required to do a page and a half to two page response and a half a page is quotes, um, you need your writing needs to be a half a page or one and a half to two pages. Um, any quotes or anything that's on top of your writing. Um, but I mean, it's going to be easiest for you just not to consult any outside sources. Then you don't have to worry about plagiarism. You don't have to worry about citation, anything like that. Okay, so course requirements, all points are approximate and subject to change. Uh, this is especially true right now. I'm currently editing this course. Um, I'm almost halfway through the course in the editing process. Um, probably by the start of the course on Monday, um, I won't have it completed. Um, I'll still be going through and editing uh, the second half of the course. And so as of now, I think the points will be pretty close to this, um, but I will tell you when I've completed that editing process and can give you exact point totals. Uh, should be a week into the course um, or so. So reading responses, you'll have um, uh, uh, assignments based on every reading. Uh, they're five points each. There's approximately 10 of them. Um, as I said, might be one more or, or one less, um, but probably 10 reading assignments with reading responses required. Each response, students will receive a grade ranging from zero to five. An assignment will be evaluated for effort, two points, understanding of material, two points, and extending ideas beyond the text, one point. Um, so what I like to tell students is um, if I can clearly tell that you made a really good effort, that you were trying really hard, even if it's a little bit off, you can get at least half the points for any assignment. Um, and often if somebody really tried hard, but, you know, is really, I'm going to try to give you as many points as possible. These assignments should be posted to CourseWeb before midnight on their due date. These activities will be primarily geared towards understanding the text, vocabulary, and theoretical concepts. Uh, quizzes, uh, the same as I said for reading responses, it'll be approximately 50 points, a um, uh, little more, a little less. I should know that in about a week or so. Um, and I will say, I'm actually mostly opposed to quizzes um, because I think, uh, for instance, memorization isn't something we should focus on. Uh, but these quizzes are more focused on, uh, there'll be videos for this course that you need to watch. And it's more to confirm that you watch the videos and to maybe reinforce some concepts. So um, it's not meant, oh, memorize this and I'm going to test you. It's, it's, um, have you, did you watch the videos? Um, and if so, hopefully by taking these quizzes, it'll help you remember some of the concepts. Um, given that any quiz I give in this course, you can actually have the quiz open 
as you watch the video. Uh, that might be the best way and complete the quiz as you watch. Uh, you can refer, um, rewind the video. You can do whatever you need to do. Um, it is perfectly allowable to have the video going as you're taking the quiz. It's probably preferable, actually. Um, it's not meant to trick you or to make you memorize anything. It's, did you uh, watch the video? And... If so, I want, these are some points I want you to remember from it. Uh, discussion board, uh, like the first week, you'll have to post an uh, introduction to yourself on the discussion board. Um, it'll be little assignments like that throughout the semester. I don't expect to have too many of them, um, and I say approximately 10 points. Uh, again, I'll know that more firmly in a week or so. And the final paper will be approximately 50 points. So you can see uh, all your weekly assignments um, add up to about 50. All your quizzes add up to about 50. The final paper about 50. And the discussion board 10. Um, for a total of approximately 160. So you can... Uh, um, <clears throat> CourseWeb will keep a running total of your grade. Just know in CourseWeb, I don't guarantee those grades till I check over them. So I'll put a little tag on there that says unofficial. Um, sometimes CourseWeb waits something too much or maybe I clicked the wrong thing. Um, so at any point, you can add up your points and make sure it's right. Uh, but if not, I don't guarantee CourseWeb's grade until I actually check them over. Okay, so grading competent, thoughtful, well-written work will receive a B. In order to receive an A, writing must be outstanding, ideas complex, and exceptionally well-supported. And um, for the weekly reading assignments, uh, I say all work must be carefully proofread and edited. Um, for the weekly assignments, I'm not expecting flawless grammar or anything like that um but you know not text language not um um you know the sentences should make sense um and be well written in that manner um for especially for the final paper papers with multiple typos and careless error errors demonstrate a lack of engagement with the class and receive lower grades I always recommend reading work out loud and engaging others in the writing process to uh, read over, give you advice, how to prevent any mistakes. Um, here's the grading scale for the course. And these are the, uh, um, <clears throat> these are the, uh, uh, the university requires these to be on any syllabus. You can read through them on your own. Um, especially if, if there's any problems with disability services, make sure you contact them and you um, let me know as well. And I'll do whatever I can to help. Um, okay, so that's the syllabus. Now I want to walk through CourseWeb with you. Now as we go through it, please keep in mind I'm still editing this. So um, when you see this on Monday, you're going to see some small differences. Nothing should jump out to you as very large, but some small differences. So when you log into our course on CourseWeb, you should see something similar to this. Um, I have the student preview mode on. I, from what I understand, it's not perfect exactly what you see, but it should be pretty close. Uh, we have announcements. That's where I'll put anything you need to know immediately. It should, anytime I do that, it should also send it to your email. Faculty information for this course being online. The main information you need to know is my email address. Um, I won't be in my office all summer, so I didn't include that information. I'm in 311 McKinney Hall in fall, if any of you want to know that. Uh, syllabus is right here. We just went over that. Um, and if I change it at all over the course of the semester, I don't. Uh, or when I, when I finish those point totals, for instance, I'll write updated and the date that it was updated right there. Um, 
then this is probably the most important section. This uh, is what will guide you through the course. It's uh, coursework. So I've broken it down into six weeks. Now, before we go into this, please keep in mind, uh, this course is the equivalent of a 15 week course. So there is a lot of work. Um, we have to do 15 weeks worth of work in six weeks. Uh, I try to spread it out and make it somewhat manageable, um, but it is a decent amount of work. Okay, so you start the course, you go to week one, and um, for at the start of each week, I'll have an instructions panel, okay? Um, and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do for that week. Um, for instance, uh, uh, for week one, you'll have to watch this video. It's number two. I'll also have an introduction, just to tell you a little bit about myself, that sort of thing uh, that I recommend watching. Um, you'll have to uh, post one to two paragraphs on the discussion board with the following, your name, major, where you're from, two interesting facts about you, uh, and that's a point on your grade. Um, then you'll need to watch uh, basic elements of a short story, and you'll see that's right here. You should be able to just click on this and watch, um, and you could make it bigger here, full screen. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, or uh, um, you could email this to yourself, etc. If for some reason you have problems playing it, there should. Um, um, always be a link here as well um, they should all be posted on YouTube so you should they should be easily accessible then I have after you watch that video or as you're watching that video and I do recommend having this up as you watch it you could open a second window and flip between the two windows um, you'll want to take a, the quiz on that video so let's take a look at how that looks you go to the quiz you hit begin and the instructions are up here this quiz will be focused on the video the primary purpose is to confirm you watch the video and reinforce some of the concepts um, so you can watch the video or refer to it as you take the quiz um, you choose the answers uh, that you want you hit save and then when you're all done, you hit save and submit. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to get out of this. Okay. So let's go back to coursework week one. Um, so you would watch the introduction video, watch the syllabus video, post your uh, one to two paragraphs on the discussion board, watch that video, take the quiz. Okay. Um, and then you'll uh, go take the homework or uh, do the first homework assignment. It's right here, the Kugelmoss episode. Uh, it's worth five points of your homework grade. Answer the questions at the end of text and submit the answers here. So this would be the homework assignment. You look at it, it's called the Kugelmoss episode by Woody Allen. And it's, uh, I think it's a great text to open the semester off. It's humorous. Woody Allen, uh, his origins are in comedy. And most students tend to like this uh, first reading. So you go to the end, and here's the homework questions. I say the assignment should be approximately one and a half to two pages. Um, I, I might uh, update this, or it's on other assignments. That's in Microsoft Word, 12 point times new Roman font and double spaced. I'll uh, update that. Then uh, um, and then you answer the questions. Sorry about that. I was making sure this was the right edition. I'll make sure it's the right edition by the time you see it. Um, then you go to the assignment page and you can hit 
write submission or browse my computer. So I tend to highly recommend writing your answers in Microsoft Word, um, saving them, and then you hit this, browse my computer, choose the file, and, uh, and then hit submit, right? And I think you, you have to hit this, I agree to submit my papers to the database as well. Um, <clears throat> you can just write in your submission, but it's gonna be hard to tell your length, how long your submission is. So I am gonna ask that you please uh, do it in Microsoft Word and attach it through this browse file. Okay, so then you hit submit and that's when I can grade it. Okay, so after that, after you've completed the homework, you go to uh, the discussion of the video. And uh, I'm gonna apologize for this. I had to uh, break the discussion video into two because uh, I had originally wanted to show some clips from uh, um, Madame Bovary uh, that's connected to this text. Um, and YouTube flagged it for copyright violations. So I had to edit these clips and take those film clips out um, and break it into two. Um, and you'll hear me refer to the film clips once or twice. It doesn't really matter. Just ignore that. Uh, then after you watch the discussion, you take the quiz. Okay. Um, now, again, keep in mind I'm still editing this. Um, so this should be correct, this should be correct, this should be correct. Um, I believe all of this will be correct. I'll add how many points this is here. Um, I believe all of week one is pretty close to set, although I will update this assignment. Okay. Then after you complete week one, you can move on to week two and you'll see the same thing here. Watch Introduction to Plato and Allegory of the Cave, which will be our second text. Um, as opposed to Woody Allen's text, um, this is a, a much more difficult text. Um, it's hard to understand, so I approach it from a few different ways to try to help you in that process. Or if you've studied it before, you'll know some of this. Um, and so I have you watch this introduction video first where I explain what we're going to focus on in the text. I then have you do the homework assignment. And again, we have the reading and at the end of it, some questions. And here I do put, uh, it should be one and a half to two pages in double space, 12 point times New Roman font. Um, and I also say answer questions one to three before watching video number five and answer questions four to six after watching it. Okay, so um, the instructions should be all um, plain language and make sense, but if you need any help, uh, just contact me anytime. Um, also, um, then when that's done, I recommend, uh, as you're struggling with this, um, here's an animated version of Plato's Allegory of the Cave to help you understand it a little better. Um, and then here's a discussion about some themes in Allegory of the Cave. Both are short videos. I think this is eight minutes, and I think this is less than five. Um, and then our discussion of Allegory in the Cave. Um, after you watch that video, you take a quiz on that video and notice it's both on the introduction and the discussion. Um, and again, you can take the quiz as you watch the videos to make sure you get all those points. And then you'd go into our next reading, I'm a Cat by Natsumi Soseki. And on this one, the um, I say not to do the questions at the end of the text. Instead, answer these. Okay. Um, and, and just a note, actually, um, when I teach this as a 15-week course, 
Um, I actually usually only have three to four questions per homework assignment. Um, but what we're doing is we're going to not have a formal midterm assignment. And instead, I'm making each homework assignment just a tad bit longer. Uh, that's to make up for a formal midterm assignment. Um, okay. And you'd go on and do weeks three, four, five, and six, which, as I said, I'm currently working on editing work th uh, week three. Um, and by the time Monday comes along, I'm hoping to be on week four um, and then shortly thereafter, five and six. Um, then uh, the discussion, uh, or I'm sorry, skipped over uh, course documents. This is where any documents we use all semester will be posted. So far, I have posted PowerPoints from each of the discussion if you want to refer back to those. That could also help you with the quiz for some parts of the quiz um, if you needed to refer to those. I also have a vocabulary handout here and a few other things as well. Anything I think can help you for the course will be posted under course documents. And then we have discussion board. Um, and I'll post different, uh, um, different little uh, threads here. Um, and this space is for writing an introduction to a class, including name, major, where you're from, and two interesting facts. Okay, now I have not used this feature before, so um, we're kind of experimenting here. If for some reason you can't make this work, you could also send me an email with that information. Um, but you should be able to hit create a thread and put your information in there and hit submit. Okay, so that is the uh, um, instructions on how to use our course, um, uh, our own course web, how to navigate it, and uh, the syllabus. Um, also, I'll say uh, you can always do assignments early. Um, anything I have posted, you can work up to that point. So for now, like if you're, uh, when you're looking at this, you know, if you want to work ahead and try to get the whole first two weeks done in the first two days, that's fine. Um, so you can always work ahead. Um, but I do ask that uh, my due dates are um, when they're due, right? But if you want to do ahead of a time, go ahead. Um, and that's it. Thanks, guys.